Silver Star is the Balger Mabyard roller coaster at Europa Park. Most roller coasters at this German theme park are understandably built by Mach, considering they own the park. But Silver Star was the first coaster added by a third party. Over the years, I've heard many call Silver Star a weaker B&M hyper. But in all my visits to the park, I've actually found this to be one of the best and most underrated B&M hypers. Find out why in this review. At the turn of the millennium, Europa Park had six different roller coasters, all from Mach. This popular theme park wanted to make a major splash. They wanted to construct the tallest and fastest roller coaster in all of Europe, but Mach had never built anything nearly that large, so they reached out to Swiss manufacturer Balger and Maviard to build the company's fourth hypercoaster. The result was Silver Star. Reaching heights of 240 feet or 73 meters, Silver Star would be the tallest coaster in Europe when it opened, and also the tallest coaster B&M had produced thus far. It wouldn't be B&M's fastest coaster though, as Six Flags Great Adventures Nitro would go one mile per hour faster, but Silver Star would still be the fastest coaster in Europe with its top speed of 79 miles per hour, or 127 kilometers per hour. Silver Star would feature a massive L-shaped layout that would travel out into the parking lot. This coaster really gets you hyped for your day as it soars over those giant camelbacks. The black track looks fine, and I do like the shiny silver trains running along the course. However, the ride's placement in a parking lot is a bit jarring compared to the immersion of Europa Park's other attractions, but you could argue it technically fits the theme. Silver Star is part of the France section of the park, and this coaster is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. The ride has a light racing theme, so it sort of makes sense you'd be traveling through a parking lot surrounded by other motor vehicles. But let's be honest, this coaster really isn't about the theming, nor does it need it. B&M Hypers are famous for their high throughput, and Silver Star is no different. It's a perfect fit for Europa Park. The ride typically runs three trains, each seating up to 36 riders across nine rows. And this ride's crew does not mess around. They dispatch trains like a well-oiled machine, Silver Star never stacks both trains, and more often than not, it avoids even stacking one train. The two trains on the course always seem to be in constant motion. As a result, Silver Star rarely has more than a 20 to 30 minute wait most days. There are a series of outdoor switchbacks, followed by a nicer looking indoor section of the queue line. This part of the queue features some Mercedes-Benz vehicles, a giant video screen, and most surprisingly, a concession stand, despite the fact this ride really doesn't get massive weights. At the end of the queue line, you can choose to wait extra for the front, or select any other row. If you don't see the line for the front extending outside, it's actually pretty short. But if it's full, it can take an extra 20 to 30 minutes. In 2017, I much preferred the back, as I tend to in most of the older B&M hypers. But in 2021, the front was almost as good, it had almost as much airtime plus a great sense of speed. One of the biggest things I've heard about Silver Star throughout the years was that this one was over trimmed. This ride does have two trims in the first half plus a mid-course brake run. When I rode it in the fall of 2017, the trims were not grabbing the train at all. I thought that may have just been due to the cooler weather. Then my 2021 visits took place in hot summer days. The first trim still never hit the train. The second trim in the mid-course brake run barely tapped the train. The end result? Silver Star was flying. Earlier POVs show the ride getting trim significantly more, but on my visit and the POVs I've seen recently, the trims are barely in use. At some point, Silver Star's trims were swapped from friction pads to magnetic trims, so maybe this contributed, but I hope Silver Star continues to run like I have experienced it. The trains feature the familiar B&M clamshells. I love these restraints. The contouring is super comfortable, and they really allow you to feel the airtime, especially because the operators do not push down all that hard at Europa Park, and their simplicity makes it super easy for the operators to check. There are no seatbelts in this one either. You dispatch to racing lights and round a corner past a man in a racing suit. You then ascend a large lift hill. It faces away from the park, so the views aren't too interesting unless you look backwards. Once at the top, you head down the 220 foot or 67 meter tall drop, which is taken at a 69 degree angle. The drop delivers several seconds of great sustained floater airtime in the back. The drop is very reminiscent of the one on Nitro in a good way. 
And if you're wondering what those barriers alongside the drop are for, they're to help prevent noise from reaching the nearby village. One neat visual about this drop is that it takes place over an active roadway. Very few coasters do this. The pullout is forceful, but it is a bit rattly. Fortunately, the rest of Silver Star is very smooth, as you'd expect from B&M. You then twist to the left and ascend the first camelback. This hill stands 161 feet, or 49 meters tall, and you zoom over it. I really like how Silver Star completes the turn in the ascent, so the top of the element can focus exclusively on airtime. And it's very strong as sustained floater airtime too, no matter where you're sitting. The second camelback is even smaller at 135 feet, or 41 meters tall, so you haul over it even faster. I was stunned the trim never hit, so everyone gets another strong and sustained dose of floater airtime. The far turnaround may not look like much, but it's quite fast and moderately forceful. It's an above average turnaround for a B&M Hyper. You then traverse the third camelback. While the trim can sometimes grab the train ever so slightly, you will get sustained floater airtime like the prior two camelbacks. These first three camelbacks are some of the best on any B&M. They rival the power of the first three on Kings Island's Diamondback. The entry into the midcourse is basically half a camelback, so those up front get some nice floater airtime, while those in the back just get lurched forwards. After cruising through the midcourse uninhibited, you sharply drop back down to the ground. Those in front get a quick pop of airtime, while those in the back get sustained flejector airtime this time. You then ascend a 270 degree upwards helix. It pulls some solid G's, and it feels like you're going way faster than you should at the top. This results in one of the most jarring airtime moments on any B&M. The helix has a super sharp kink at the top, so the train abruptly dives downwards. Everyone gets a true ejector pop cresting this hill. But those in the back will stay out of their seat for ejector airtime that's weak in power, but plenty sustained in the descent. It is rare to get airtime of this magnitude on any B&M. And to make this moment even sweeter, the drop isn't straight. It subtly banks to the right, so you get some laterals as well. Silver Star then charges over a smaller camelback. The airtime hills in the second halves of B&M Hypers are usually much weaker, but Silver Star's is about as powerful as those in the first half because you have so much speed. So I'm certainly not complaining about another good dose of sustained floater airtime here. Silver Star then has a unique and wild finale. You have this snappy S-bend that leads into the brake run. The element gives some lateral jolts, and then you're lurched forwards as you hit the brakes with a ton of speed. This is one of the few B&M Hypers that finishes with a legitimate bang. Based on how I've experienced Silver Star, this one has better pacing than most B&M Hypers. The one I'd compare Silver Star to most is Six Flags Over Georgia's Goliath, and that's a good comparison. But that's assuming the trims in midcourse are not hitting as I've experienced it. So what would I rate Silver Star? I would give this B&M Hyper a 9.5 out of 10. The amount of sustained airtime this coaster delivers is marvelous, especially because it's so strong throughout. Every single hill holds you out of your seat, and some of the hills in the second half are particularly forceful. I also love how this coaster holds its speed until the very end. That is a rarity for most B&M Hypers. Add in the super comfortable trains and smooth ride, and this makes Silver Star one of the most re-rideable coasters in the world. I know if Mach were to build a hyper coaster for Europa today, they'd put in one of their own, but their decision to install one in the early 2000s is what gave us one of the best B&M hypers ever. Shambhala is still the king of the B&M hypers in my opinion, but Silver Star may be the second best. It's neck and neck with Candemonium at Hershey Park and Mako at SeaWorld Orlando for second with me. I think Candemonium and Mako have stronger first halves, but Silver Star is a better second half than either of those two coasters, and a nearly as good first half. I just hope others can experience Silver Star like I have. It is easily the best ride at Europa Park when it runs like this. So those are my thoughts on Silver Star, the incredible B&M hyper coaster at Europa Park. What are your thoughts on Silver Star? Have you gotten rides as strong as mine? Or were the trims an issue? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.